change this for us? Hi, think about it. A fiver and five ones. I've got no coins at all. Oops. There you go. Fiver, five ones. So, where's the wonderful Bev? Uh, not sure where she is. Not oh, talking to the devil. Pardon? We were just talking about you. Sorry, I'm late. I slept in. Oh, late night. Is it okay if I go and put the kettle on? Yeah, sure, yeah. See ya. Get to all of. Hold it, I love. If you insist. Milky one sugar, please. I had the feeling you wouldn't show up today. Why not? I work here, don't I? No, why should I have? Mixed bungalows being done, you know. Oh. Yeah, went round there yesterday and everything's been cleared out. Yeah, well, that's what Jimmy said he was going to do, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've just collared Jimmy and he's denied all knowledge of it. He reckons he didn't do it in the end. What, you mean the real burglar's been in? Don't know what to believe. It's a bit of a coincidence, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter to Mick, does it? I mean, he can still claim on the insurance and cleared all his debts. No, he can't, can he? As if it was a real burglar, they're not going to bring the stuff back. Hello? I know I shouldn't be calling you, but I'm desperate. It's been terrible. What's happened? Look, Bev, about what happened last night. If you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah, but we'll have to talk about it. I don't know. You haven't seen Jimmy, have you? No, he hasn't been in here, mate. Hey, have you managed to get in touch with Mickey? No, and he's back Monday, isn't he? Terrible, isn't he? What's the world coming to? You can't even go away for a week's holiday without your house gets burgled. Oh, well, I'll see you later, anyway. Yeah, listen, I was thinking, you know, do you think we ought to have a whip round for him? You know, I mean, let him know there's at least one or two people still decent on this earth. Well, I don't know. You know, he's like dead proud and everything. Ah, it's the least we can do, though, isn't it? Not even soften the blow of it. Here you go. Take that. I insist. And not only that, I vote you in charge because you're one of his closest mates. Oh. Well, I don't like asking people for money, especially these days. Everyone's skint, aren't they? But I don't think any of his next-door neighbours are strapped for cash to you. Tell you what, nip round and see Maxie and Pat Farnham. Tell them I'll give you 50 quid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Ron. Hey, hang on a minute, hang on. Here, yeah, I'll give these to those four kids. I don't think they're gonna have such a great Easter. Ah, oh, cheers, Ron. Let's go to you that way. See you later. What's up with you, Simbad? Got the munchies as usual, have you? Oh, very fully. Aye, aye, seeing as you're in such high spirits, maybe you'd like to make a contribution to Albert Brown, but haven't Mick Johnson. Well, it's on. The house has been robbed. Yeah, it's taken everything by all accounts. Nice, well, I uh, suppose I don't want everyone thinking that I'm heartless. There you go. Oh, cheers, Buzz. See you later. Hello. See you soon. Good afternoon. Well, you're looking very smart today, Barry. You have somewhere special? I'm off to some round table thing here, aren't I, with Max Farnham? Oh, he is, aren't I? Yeah, well, uh, he's retiring, isn't he, as chairman? Oh, Max retired. I always knew he was older than he clocked on, you know. So what are we doing, Ron? Trying to brighten the place up a bit? Hey? Oh, you mean Bev? <laughs> That's just me, uh, your assistant there. Eh? Yeah, but she's not bad, though, is she? No, no, I suppose not, no. Too young for you, though, Ron. Yeah, there's a cheery. Ta-ra, mate. Yeah. It's gonna be late at this rate, you know? Yeah, well, we'll be even later if we run out of petrol. Is Karen coming? Yeah, she's meeting us there. Oh, Barry Grant's making his own way there, too. Ah, hope we'll both enjoy it. I hope it won't be awkward. Why should it? Well, it does rather look like the end of a beautiful relationship that never was. Well, they haven't seen much of each other recently, what with Karen working in London. It'll take long before they pick up where they left off. We'll see. Right, well, then. Uh... Bev, are you positively going to be all right? I mean, there's nothing you feel unsure about. You're not unhappy working here, anything, are you? Why should I be? Anyway, your wife works next door, doesn't she? I can always ask her if I'm upset about anything, can't I? Yeah.
Can I make you a cup of tea? I can't stay long. Well, you can stay for a cup of tea, can't you? So, what did they take? Well, there wasn't much to take. Not that that's any comfort. They took the wireless. I'm going to be lost without that. Listening to phone-in chat shows is the nearest I get to conversation these days. How did they get in? Just push that door in. If you knew the lock was dodgy, I'm sure that young lad downstairs sells drugs. There are people knocking at all hours. It could have been anyone. I went down there last week and asked politely. Could have turned the music down. You should have heard the abuse I got. Effing and blind. It's the same every time I go out now. Every time I pass, I dread going out. And they took my watch. The one you bought me that Christmas. It's the one I got engraved. Tick tock, Trev's clock. Stupid message. I left it out on the side. It needed a new battery. I cried when I realized it had gone. I seem to cry a lot these days. At least I'm not ashamed to admit it now. Just seeing you there brings it all back to me. What I wouldn't give to be able to go home to Baxter Avenue right now. We had it all, didn't we? I was so proud. Proud of you and the girls. Everything. We were the perfect family. That's what they said. And now look at us. Me in this shed and you in a safe house. Well, what is it you want me to do? Spend the rest of my life in here rotting, looking over my shoulder every five minutes. I've served my sentence. I swear I don't think I can cope for another minute. I really don't. I'd be safer on the streets. It's my only other option. Barry now. Hi. Glad you could make it. Ah, um, can I get you a glass of wine? Yeah, I'll avoid this. Right. Oh, I'll get your hand. Do you want a refill? Thanks. So how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Not too bad. Good. Listen, I'm sorry about the other day. I mean, I know how much your job means to you and that. It's just... <sighs> Thanks. There you go. Ah, right. Well, look, uh, let me introduce you to uh, some of the others. Right, I'll see you in a bit, then. Fine. Do I uh, detect something of an awkward atmosphere? I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. I don't want to spoil Max's day. Seems very quiet. Yes, Mike and Keith are down at the pizza parlor working. You had a busy day? Not too bad. How about you? Mm, you must be joking. I went to the supermarket and did the shopping, and that's about it. I, uh, I left your change and receipt here on the table. You seem a bit down. Are you okay? Well, uh, to be honest, I've been feeling a bit depressed. Why? What's up? The usual things. Having no money, not being able to get a job. And I feel terrible with you all paying for the food. You're doing your bit. And don't worry, something's going to turn up. Is there something else? Oh, I feel really terrible asking you this. But I'm desperate. There are some things that I need to buy, and I literally haven't got a penny. Well, how much do you need? About 
two pounds should be plenty. I'm really sorry to ask you, but you're the only friend I have. Is that all you want? You're not going to get a lot with that. It's, uh, it's just for some personal things that I need. All oh, right. Why didn't you get them at the supermarket? I didn't like to. It wasn't my money. I didn't want to take advantage of your generosity. Well, you wouldn't be. Look, are there any other personal things you might need? Yes, but nothing too urgent. Well, no buts. Just ask. Well, uh, I could do with a new pair of tights and I'm running out of deodorant. Is that being very cheeky? No, of course it isn't. I'm going to the shop myself in a minute to get some cigarette papers. I'll get your stuff then. I promise you, as soon as I get a job, I'll pay you back every single penny. I don't mind. No, but I do. I can't be asking you every time I need something. Well, I need a cup of tea. <laughs> Everyone enjoying themselves. We're having a delightful time, thank you very much. Ooh. Thanks very much. You take it easy, you. It's still only early. Well, it's all right. It's only about my third. It's all very quiet, Barry. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm just not only that so. Well, why shouldn't you be all right? It's a property tycoon at uh, 30 something. And, if memory serves me right, Barry was the subject of a bet between the most beautiful women in this room. Oh, to be single and successful, eh? Oh, I. What was that then? Oh, didn't I tell you? Well, before you two became romantically involved, Karen bet Patricia that she could get you into bed before Christmas. <laughs> and the rest is history. <coughs> well, well, it was funny at the time. Hmm? Actually, Max, I think I would like a drink. Ron, how much are these? They've got no price on. Well, are they dinghies? Yeah, they're the regulars. Uh, one pound nine, aren't they? Hello there. All right. How's it going, all right? Good, thanks. Hi, right, are you're not the fans of burglar, are you? What? Well, I presume that them tight chance to give your legs a natural tan, are they? <laughs> right. Thanks. And a packet of Red Rivers, too, please. Have you heard from your mum and dad recently? Yeah, yeah, they're fine, thanks. Mm. When you see him, give him my best, won't you? I certainly will. Thanks a lot. See ya. Ta -da. You know, I don't quite know what to make of that one. Well, he was quite nice himself. Do you know? Yeah, he lives next door to us, doesn't he? He's the one our Michael's moved in with. So, um, did you, uh, need to talk to Dee Dee about anything when I was out before? Any, you know, any problems, like? No, I manage fine, thanks. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll finish getting them boxes down from upstairs, then. <laughs> so what did you win, then? What for? You know, a little bet, you know. <laughs> the weekend in Paris. You had a good time, didn't we? I did, yeah. I think you thought it was a bit of a joke. Oh, come on, don't go serious on me again. The bet was only a bit of fun. So that's it between us then, is it? Oh, don't kid yourself. There was anything ever serious between us. Yeah, well, I'm not going to worry about it anyway, am I? Well, I'm glad you feel like that, because I'm not going to be around for much longer. You're getting off, are you? Yeah, well, I was made an offer in London, which I couldn't really refuse. <laughs> but Patricia's not too happy about that. Well, actually, I haven't had a chance to discuss it with her yet. And this is not really the time or place. Hi, how's things? Oh, that'd be great, sir. Well, we're just over there. Max is coughing up the drink. <laughs> we'll be over in a sec. Right. I'm getting off back to the office. I've got some important things to do. I'm only going to say goodbye to Patricia and Max. 
I think Max is too glad to notice, don't you? <laughs> well, I'll see you in Evelyn. Will you? I really will have to go now. Beth and Rachel will be worried sick about me. I'll just have one more cup of tea. They won't know where I am. I didn't leave a message. I wasn't expecting to be so long. Oh, surely you can stay for one more cup. It's not going to kill you, is it? I want to go. There's nothing to be scared of, you know. The cockroaches won't be out here for at least another hour. You haven't really got cockroaches, have you? <laughs> Listen, that's the least of my worries. In fact, I'd appreciate the company. <laughs> How do they expect people to live in dumps like this? I know. I sometimes think I'd be better off back in Senate. I really do. At least I had good locks on the doors and half-decent meals to eat. And there were one or two people I could actually talk to. I hate being stuck in here by myself day and night. It's cracking me up. It really is. Look, I don't like leaving you here on your own, but I've got no choice. Listen, we'll have one more cup of tea, and then I'll walk you to the bus stop, eh? I could do with some fresh air. Have you finished all the shampoos? Yep. Well, looks like it then. Tell you what, though, you've done a smashing job here. Work of art, isn't it? Moist to bear. Hey, look, Bev, before you go, um, I've got something for you in the back. Don't think I like the sound of that. You don't mind. What is it? Don't worry, it's not a bomb. It's not Easter till next week. No, well, it's more of an apology, really. What for? Come on, Bev, you know what for. I was completely out of order yesterday. I don't know what come over me. I don't blame you for cracking me one. I should never... Well... I should never have touched you like that. And I do appreciate you saying nothing's a deity. I thought you might. Nothing to tell her, is there? I reckon this must have cost you a few, Bob. Yeah, well, I had to go all the way into town for it, didn't I? That's why I was so long this afternoon. Thanks. So does this mean that you will accept my apology? I suppose so. You might think I overreacted a bit last night, Ron, but I thought I was promised a driving lesson, not a date. Would that have made any difference? Call me old-fashioned, but I'm partial to a bit of courting. I like to be wined and dined before I let a fella maul me. I don't like being treated like some tart. No, sounds fair enough to me. We're closed. It's me, Ron. Oh, hiya, love. Are you coming home or what? The tea's been in the oven for ages. Yeah, yeah, we just finished, haven't we? <laughs> hey, you should have phoned, you know. I don't you want to do that pathway by yourself in the dark. I didn't know you cared. I, I hope he's paying you overtime for this. Bev, you shouldn't have. I'm on a diet. Can must have cost you a small fortune, that. It's me, Mum. Oh, isn't that lovely? I don't think any of my kids have ever bought me an Easter egg like that. Yeah, she's good for a mummy. Am I all right to go now, then, Mr. Dixon? Yeah, sure. Call me Ron. <laughs> yeah, all right, Bev. See you in the morning. Bye. And, um, thanks a lot. See ya. Oh, she seems harmless enough, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I've just got to put these boxes in the bowl with you. Oh, that reminds me. It's Holy Weekend next week. Would you give us a lift to church? Ron, are you listening to me? Oh, oh sorry, love. It's been a long day. You shouldn't have come all this way with me. It'll take you ages to get back. I don't mind. I'm just glad to get out of that room for an hour. You shouldn't be seen round here. I think you better go now. I think there's a bus about half past. I'm going to walk back. It'll kill some more time. You can't walk all that way. Why not? I just hope those smackheads aren't there when I get back. I'm pretty sure it was them who broke in last night. I hate to think what they do next. I'm sorry you have to go back there on your own. Yeah. Well, I won't sleep, that's for sure. You couldn't get some sleeping pills? It's not sleeping pills I need. 
What I need is somewhere where I can feel safe at night, just for a couple of nights. I get myself set up with decent digs, sort out the rest of my life. Well, isn't there anywhere else you can go? You're the only one I know at the safe house. I don't suppose there's any chance. Well, there's no harm in asking, eh? If it was just me, then maybe I'd consider letting you have the sofa for a few nights. But I've got to think about Beth and Rachel. Why, well, Rachel would be over the moon. You saw how she was when I turned up with her birthday present. And what about Beth? I promised her I'd never have you in the house again. Well, if you can trust me, why can't she? What makes you so sure I trust you? And have come round to see me otherwise. I mean, I don't expect her ever to love me again or even forgive me, but I just need her to know that she can trust me. Beth trusts you. You could talk around. You make it sound so simple. But it really would be different this time. I mean, I wouldn't be for good. I'd be just there for a couple of nights, and then I'd go again. And that way, she could see that she can trust me. Oh, I don't know. I'm really at the end of my tether, you know. I wouldn't ask you otherwise. Not, but if the Shackletons were to find out, we'd lose the house, and then we'd all be in the same boat. They don't even know I've seen you. Yeah, I don't know. Fair enough. I'd better head back. I'm sorry for going on at you. You do understand, don't you? I really appreciate you coming around to see me. Bye. Okay, what? You can stay on the sofa, but just for two nights until you get yourself sorted. Honest to God. Not tonight, though. We need time to try and explain to Beth. When? Monday. Gives me the weekend to try and talk around. But only for two nights until you sort yourself out. What time? About tea time. You won't regret this. Honest, you won't. Brookside is back on Monday at the same time and don't forget our omnibus edition on Sunday morning at 10. I've been meaning to tell you both. I've spent all weekend wondering how I was going to break it to you. And you won't mind waiting another ten minutes for you. I'm just going to go and wash my hair. Your hair can wait. This is serious. Well, come on then. The suspense is killing us. Your dad's coming to stay with us for a couple of nights. When? He should be here about tea time. You are joking, aren't you? You stupid, stupid Why can't your dad speak to me like that? Rachel, will you go upstairs, please, love? Why do I always get sent upstairs? Just when you two are about to have an argument. Just go, please. I don't believe this. 
You promised this safe that you'd never have him back. I'm not having him back. It's only for two nights. And when was all this arranged? I went to see him on Friday. So that's why you're so late. His room had been broken into. He was in a terrible state. I, I couldn't just leave him there. It's just while he finds somewhere else half decent. Oh, my heart bleeds for him. You can't imagine how terrible it is where he's living. It's worse than any prison. It's what he deserves, Mum. Please, don't make this any harder for me. I promise, it'll only be for two nights, just while he sorts himself out. Oh, don't kid yourself. Once he's here, you'll end up forgiving him like you always did. We'll be back to square one before you even realise it. It won't be like that. He'll go after two days, he's promised. I really believe he has changed. You know I wouldn't let him anywhere near otherwise. I don't believe this. <sighs> Who are you phoning? The Shackletons. See if they can talk any sense into you. Don't be so stupid. She thinks he even knows where we live will be thrown out of here before we know it. Is that what you want? Well, anything's better than having him back. Please, Beth, he really has changed. Just give him one more chance and then he'll be out of our lives forever. Where are you going? Out. She'll be all right. I'm glad he's coming. Aren't you going out tonight? What? You all right? Oh, ignore me. I'm in a foul mood. Why? What's up? Just my stupid mother. Well, where are you going now? I don't know. I thought I might get a bus into town. Well, listen, I'll knock around at yours at seven, if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be glad to get out. See ya. See ya. What's she writing? Where is she went now? Because, Mark, I've just been flicking through these personal columns. It's amazing how many people write in with a view to marriage. And? Think about it. The only realistic way I can legally stay in this country is to get married. You're not seriously thinking of replying to any of these, are you? Well, maybe I could place my own ad. There must be somebody out there who'd consider marrying me. You can't just get married for the sake of it. It's my only real choice. I can't carry on borrowing money from you forever. I need a job. To get a job, I need to be here legally. To be legal, I need to marry someone. Well, you could end up meeting any old weirdo. Well, <laughs> you might even end up meeting a, a string of illegal immigrants in exactly the same position as yourself. So I'm not looking to settle down with someone. I just want to find someone who's willing to come to some sort of agreement. Look, be realistic. Why should a complete stranger want to help you? All well, I want is a bit of paper that says I'm a legal British citizen. We wouldn't have to live as man and wife. Look, if you're seriously thinking of doing this, then it has to be with someone you can trust. It is illegal, you know. I like living in this country. I don't want to go home. Oh, you went from me? No. Have you heard anything? Oh, I just know he's due back sometime tonight. He must be too busy enjoying himself. He hasn't even phoned. Oh, I was supposed to do the windows on the estate this afternoon. I want to be back in the bungalow by the time he gets back. Well, I might get back till late, matey. Oh, I hope you're right. Left me in charge, so it's only right I should be the one that breaks the news to him. Yeah, well, I don't envy you. No. How'd you tell someone that nearly everything they work for has been taken? You've remembered it's Easter this weekend. How could I forget? Thomas has already spent the last week telling me what type of eggs he wants. It reminds me, I must ring Susanna about Matthew and Emma. Your ex had almost forgotten she existed. Now, I thought it would be nice to have him stay for the weekend. Oh! Max, why do you always wait till I'm in a mad rush before you bring these things up? Yeah, I didn't seem to be any problem. Oh, are you joking, aren't you? The house is already filled to capacity. Look, you know, I wouldn't mind any other time, but we really haven't got room for my parents and two extra kids. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It would be a bit of a hunting. Oh, I'm not being mean. Look, why don't they just come for Easter Sunday, like they did last year? And after that, any weekend's fine, once Mum and Dad have gone. Yeah, all right. Well, look, I'll uh, give Susanna a ring and let her know, and um, see you later, all right? Bye. Do you have to pay for these? Why can't you make yourself a pizza? I'm sick of pizzas. Oh, go on then. And don't call me mean again. Are you still corn? What's corn supposed to mean? 
Ah, he's gone all coy on me I'm now. I'm sort of he? seeing the new girl, Beth, from next door, if that's what you mean. Oh, getting serious, eh? Well, we're going out tonight, actually. Where are you off? We're going to see Malcolm X at the 051. The 051? What's that like? Some kind of secret code, so I don't know where you're going. Malcolm X is Spike Lee's new film. The 051 is a cinema. I didn't realise people still went out and dates to the pictures. Well, we'll be watching the film, not snogging on the back row. Yeah, uh, they don't like pictures like they used to, you know. No, I'll never be another Gary Cooper. Thank God. There was no tellies when I was a kid, you know. Every week we used to get packed off to the Saturday morning picture show. No swap shop then. I think you mean going live, don't you? They're all bingo halls now, aren't they? So, um, will you be going out for a drink when you're in the flicks? Well, we'll probably go to the bar. Which one? The bar bar, that's what it's called. A bloody stupid name, isn't it? Is that what all the young ones are hanging out these days? Well, I don't know. I just like it. Anyway, why are you so interested? You thinking of taking me more on a surprise night out? Hiya. Morning, love. Hey, you know where the cat lives, don't you? No, no, I'm just interested to hear what you young ones get up to these days, that's all. Listen, I'll have to shoot off anyway. Keith panics when I leave him on his own for too long. See you later. Yeah, ta-da. And your coffee. Have you finished those invoices for the issue with Willie's account? Mm -hmm. Ages ago. Thought you looked a bit bored. Have you proofread the barrister's files? Oh, they're perfect. Nothing more I can do on those until they've chosen which one they prefer. Looks like we'll be having an early lunch then. <sighs> Looks like we'll be having an early finish, full stop. Look, I've been thinking. Perhaps it'd be better all round if we were to go our separate ways for a while. <laughs> What's brought this on? Well, it's just being realistic. I mean, there's hardly enough work for you, let alone the two of us. Oh, yeah, things are a bit quiet at the moment, but they'll pick up. I just, I just feel a bit of a burden at the moment. I'd understand if you wanted to go it alone again. Oh, hey, we've only been together less than six months. I mean, we'd be mad to throw it all away so soon. I know the accounts we're working on at the moment are only small, but they're beginning to come in steadily. We're slowly building up a really good reputation for ourselves. You'll see, three months' time, you'll think, how did we ever have time for that conversation? It's only a shame that you couldn't get anyone interested in us when you were down in London. I'll, uh, I'll make myself a coffee. We'll be fine. We'll see. Carry that for me, eh? You're a strong girl, aren't you? Cheers, mate. Hey, wait for me! We'll order some pizzas and have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> All right, Mike. Can you throw a couple of specials on for us, please, mate? All right, Mickey. Sinbad said you won't be back till tonight. No, I'm not stopping long. We've only just got back. Is Keith out? Uh, he's just taking a delivery to Norris Green. She'll be back any minute. Well, could you ask him to drop the pizzas off when they're ready? Yeah, well, cheers, mate. Mike. See you later. Hang on a minute. Hey, don't cross that road. Now, wait for me. Yeah, mate. You put that on. You'll be a bobby, can't you? You are. That's better, isn't it? <laughs> All right, Buzz. Done. All right, Mick, uh, when did you get back, mate? Just got back now. Hey, you haven't seen Simbad, have you? No, why? He's all right, isn't he? Yeah. Good morning! Just where stand down, will you? Back off! Hang on a minute. Good morning! Where are you? Where are you? Naughty boys, weren't they? Go on, nearly home now. Hey, Mick! Mick! Max? Yeah, I, I shouldn't be home at all, actually. I've uh, left my scion in the bedroom. Sounds painful, that, mate. <laughs> Have you only just got back? Yeah, can't wait to get the kettle on. See you later, Max. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been broken into, Max. I'm very sorry. You didn't give me a chance to explain. I don't believe this. You busy? Yeah. Are you? No, not really. Wow, we finished early. Look, I'm sorry about Friday night. What about that? Well, all that stuff about you being a bet. I mean, it was nothing worth getting upset about. It was only a bit of fun. I wasn't upset. I'm glad you had a bit of fun. Good. That's all right, then. Yeah. 
We're all going to be squashed up in here tonight, aren't we? Yeah, you can go back to your own bed tomorrow, can't you? Will the business come back, Dad? Of course they won't, son. Mr Farnham said that Uncle Simbad's already phoned the police. Will they catch them, Dad? You better hide. Will we get our telly back, Dad? We'll see, eh? You two have an early night. It's been a long day, hasn't it? I'll come back and check on you both in a bit. Night-night. Night-night, Dad. I'll leave the hall lights on for you, eh? Oh, my glad to be home. It's been one of those days. I saw Barry Grant on my way home from work, and according to Karen, he's still not a very happy man. I swear I'm never going to have another drink again. I think you should go and apologise. Why? Well, it was your loose tongue that caused all this. I didn't think you'd take it so seriously, and I had had a couple of drinks. Well, why don't you pop into the club later, clear the air, make you feel better. Don't tell me she's letting him move in with her again. Not after all she's been through. Shall we go in? What's up? Someone just walked over my grave. Come on, let's go in. Rachel, you ever gonna get out of that bath? Your dad's here. Can I go up and see her? Uh, no, she won't be long. Hi, hello. I'll be down in a minute. See, I told you. <laughs> Beth? Your dad's here. I know. I heard. All right, love? Am I glad to get out of that hovel? Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, yes, please. I'd kill for one. Beth, did you put the kettle on? I'm going out now, Mum. I hope you're not going on account of me, are you? I don't want you to feel like I'm invading your privacy. I'll only be here for a few nights, and I promise not to get in your way. I thought Mike wasn't picking you up until seven. Well, I'm ready now, so I might as well pick him up. What time will you be back? I don't know. It won't be too late, will it? I said, I don't know. Oh, put the kettle on. Dad! Where have you been? I've been waiting for Ben. <laughs> well, at least somebody's glad to see me. <laughs> Sit down. Look a great, not a dollar. Right. I think that's it. You're folk tonight then? You must be joking. I haven't had a decent social life since I was about 17. Hey, I don't believe that. Almost. Nearest I get to being social these days. It's a cup of tea with me on before I go to bed. I would have thought a young girl like you would have been out all the time with these all night rages and everything. Nah, I'm not into things like that. What do you know about all night rages? Hey, don't you look so surprised? I know where the young ones go to enjoy themselves these days. Tell me, please. I haven't got a clue. Well, I mean, you could always go to five or one to see a film, couldn't you? Never heard of it. Anyway, I don't really like the pictures. Do you, dear? Well, if I want to see a film, I'd just wait till it comes out on video and see it then. Well, in that case, I mean, you could always pop in the bar for a drink. The where? The bar, bar, Beverly. That's what it's called. That's where all the young ones go these days. Don't you know anything? Obviously not. I told you I was out of touch. Anyway, I'm not really into pubs and clubs and that. So, um, what are you into then? I love restaurants. So we can sit and have a big pig out and a good gab. Chinese is my favourite. I could live off egg foo young. Do you know what? You are a girl after my own heart. I love Chinese food. Dee Dee can't stand it. She's not very really adventurous when it comes to food. Can't stand people like that. I'll eat anything. Well, listen, I'll tell you what, um, why don't we treat ourselves one night after work, you know, uh, call it a staff meal, you know. <laughs> have to be Chinese. Oh, of course. Right. I'll hold you to that. Made me hungry now. I think I'll pop the chippy on the way home. Good night. Good night.
Max, you're a bit early, aren't you? We don't open for two hours yet. What can I do for you? Well, it's a bit embarrassing, really. Do you fancy a drink? Oh, no, no, no. I've had never to have another drink after that round table do on Friday. Oh, come on, you can have a little one. Oh, well, all right, then I'll just have a lager. A uh, half. And not a word to Patricia. Not a word to Patricia. Actually, I came to apologise. What for, Max? I'm afraid I had a few too many on Friday. Well, it's all right. I mean, it was a big day for you, wasn't it? Return and chairman and all that. All that nonsense I was going on about that bet between Karen and Patricia over you. It was stupid me going on like that. Oh, it doesn't matter, Max. Don't worry about it. Oh, cheers. I'll tell you what, I might have one myself, seems to me. Oh, right. Yeah. So, um, how are things between uh, you and Karen? Haven't you heard, Max? There is nothing between me and Karen. Oh. I mean, there never, ever has been. I thought you two seemed to be getting on pretty well together. Yeah, Max. Well, I was just a bit of rough, wasn't I? I was just some scally who happened to turn her on. You were right. You know, about the bet and all that. She just won me, didn't she? Well, I really am sorry. I wish I hadn't opened my mouth now. Oh, I'm glad you did, Max. I'm going to just prove what a stuck-up bitch he was. I'm sorry I didn't feel like dinner, Sam. That's all right. You could always go another time, can't we? It was just nice to get out. Are you all right? Would it be all right if I stay on the sofa at yours tonight? I just don't feel like going home. Yeah, I suppose so. Landlord might kick off a bit like. Why what's up? Nothing. I, I don't want to see my dad, that's all. Well, he's not here again, is he? Yeah. But if it's any trouble, I can always go home. No, no, it's no problem. You just have to locate with the landlord first. So. Watching? Oh, I'm just some corny horror film from the show. You know best from next door, don't you? Hey, dude. Hello. Hi. Um, I'll go and put the kettle on. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Peter, is it alright if Beth sleeps on the couch tonight? What's wrong with her house next door? I don't know, to be honest. Ah, uh, come on, Mike. You know the house rules. No women after midnight. Yeah, all right. So is it all right, then? Yeah, of course it is. Nice one. <laughs> thinking about what we were talking about this morning. Still thinking about putting an ad in the Lonely Hearts column? No, you're right. It was a stupid idea. I'm glad you've seen sense. I mean, what chance have I got of getting a complete stranger to marry me when there's nothing in it for him? Exactly. What you said was true. If I'm going to do it, I need to do it with someone I know really well and someone I can trust. It would definitely make more sense. Will you do it? Well, obviously, I don't mean anything serious. Uh, we could draw up a contract and then get divorced as soon as possible. I don't know. Uh, you seem the obvious choice. We've been through so much together. What with Diana and the trial and everything. Look, Anna, I... you know I'll always be grateful for the way you stood up for me in court. But this... Well, I've told you, all I want is a piece of paper that tells me I can stay in this country legally. Nothing else. Great right, soldiers, your mummy. Oh. <laughs> Hello. How'd you go later, uh, Max? Yes. <laughs> you just can't beat that cheeky scout humour, can you? You ought to be on the stage. Well, if Ron Dixon can do it, I tell you what, it must be easier than cleaning windows for a living. I've been on the estate all afternoon, I'm knackered. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by the way, Max, I'm not at yours Friday. There was no answer, you know. Well, we've already paid for the windows. No, no, I'm talking about this collection I've organised for Mick Johnson, you know. Oh, right, yes, that's right. Yeah, all the neighbours have chipped in. In fact, they've been very generous. Ron Dixon gave 50 quid. Pardon? Well, actually, he didn't. He just told me to say that to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, much appreciated, Max. Just on my way to Ron Dixon's now. Oh, terrible this afternoon. Why? Well, I was there when Mick and his children arrived home. I didn't have the heart to tell him. You should have seen his face. I thought he was going to burst into tears. 
Just didn't know what to say. He's back already. Yeah, didn't you hear? He got back about uh, two-ish. Oh, no. Why? What's the matter? I wasn't expecting back till later. Thanks, Max. When did it happen? Last Wednesday, I came round to check on the police and found it like this. I, mean, I don't know what to say. I'm really sorry. I can't believe it. Where's the kids? They're in my bed. I mean, this is really frightening the life out of them, you know. Yeah. Paul Dixon sent these hands a couple of Easter eggs for them. That's good. And uh, well, it was also his idea that we should have a whip around for you. All the neighbours chipped in. There's 85 quid there. I should have known something was going to go wrong. It was all going too well. I had a brilliant time in London. Got on really well with the folks and all. The kids didn't want to leave my aunt, you know. <sighs> Nor did I. I wish I hadn't known. Look, I know it won't be much of a comfort now, but at least you'll have the insurance to claim, won't you? What insurance? Oh, I'll make you joking, aren't you? I wish I was somebody. But when you've got debts like mine, house insurance is the least he worries. I cancelled it ages ago. Susanna's calling round there. She's with Matthew and Emily. What for? I, I don't know. She uh, she said she wanted a word about something. But look, I may have an appointment. Oh, please. Don't ask me to meet them. You'll just have to get back from whatever you're doing. I may be delayed. Well, make sure you're not. I don't fancy making polite small talk to your ex-wife for goodness knows how long. All right, look, I'll uh, make sure I'm in to see her. I'll see you later. Bye. Mick? I'm sorry, dear, about your breaking. Thanks. It was a bit of a smack in the mouth coming back to all that. Oh, the kids taking it. Yeah, you just play it down, don't you? Yeah. Actually, I'm glad we weren't in the place when it got screwed. I mean, the last time that happened, I ended up in court for defending my kids and my property. <sighs> well, I'd best get to work. If there's anything I can do. Thanks, Pat. See ya. Hi, Mick. All right, Trish. Hello. All right. Good pair of hips on her, isn't she? Turn the lights on, Melissa. Hey, Mick. Sorry to hear about your break-in, mate. I don't know. Some terrible gets around, isn't it? Mm. You wouldn't happen to know where they were, would you, Jimmy? Me? Well, you know, I seem to remember a little conversation we had a few weeks ago about the benefits of screwing your own house. Well, you don't think it was me, do you? Well, it's a theory, isn't it? You see, you tend to get angry when something like this happens. You know, you want to start breaking legs and that if you uh, catch it where I did it. Mick, I've stood behind you, haven't I? I've been a mate, of, a confidant. Got you in the cupboard, New Year, didn't right, I? All right, all right, point taken. But it is a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of it about, isn't there? Anyway, look on the bright side. Which is? Insurance. Bang in the owl, what's it? Inflated claim. <laughs> I haven't got any insurance, Jimmy. That's why I'm in the mood to kill if I cop whoever did it.
other than the Beresford account, there's not a lot in. Got one or two irons in the fire. People Max introduced me to when you were down in London. I did actually want to talk to you about that. I hope you're not going to start talking about going our separate ways again. None but the brave deserve the fair, remember? All right, are we? Hello. If you want a word, I, I won't be a minute. No, actually, I've uh, come to see your partner. Hmm. Fancy a drink? Yeah, I'll have uh, coffee, please. You can't have that fresh uh, Colombian as well. Supermarket own brand, I'm afraid. We were just discussing business confidence. How difficult it is to keep it when things are so tight. Yeah, well, it's uh, tough all around at the moment. The club's going through a quiet patch, you know. Yeah. But if clients sense any lack of confidence in us, then they'll look elsewhere. Well, maybe Karen feels it's a bit worse up here, you know, in the cold north, with our whippets and snuff, than it is down in London. Oh, don't tell me uh, she hasn't told you yet about her little golden opportunity. Oh, what's that? I was going to tell you. Oh, don't tell me I put my foot in it. What's going on? I've been trying to tell you. I just... Well, it was becoming more difficult. What's difficult? I've been asked to work for one of the firms I approached in London. The offer came up when I was down there. Looking for work for our partnership? Look, you said yourself there was only just enough work for the two of us. I've been meaning to tell you. You've waited all bloody week to tell me, you mean. We're partners, for God's sake. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I didn't know how you'd take it. The truth I can take, deception I can't. There was nothing for us. I was simply being realistic. Look, I better go. I'll, I'll call back later for my things. I'm sorry. I really am. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to come out like that. You know, I've always thought it was such a shame that snakes are immune to their own poison. Yeah, but they know who the enemy are, and they know when to bite back. <sighs> problems, mate. Big, big problems. All right, boys. Oh, yeah. yeah you know Beth, don't you? Yeah, we've met her, yeah. yeah. We're in the middle of something here. Oh, sorry, it's just about the burglary and mix. Heard you were doing a bit of a collection on there. Uh, well, I haven't got much, but you can have what I've got. Oh, cheers, mate. I've seen him and his two kids. It's a real shame. Shame? It's terrible. If you get them, you should string them up. Mick's got enough problems as it is. Mm. Anyway, see you later. Yeah, sit down, Mike. See ya. Yeah. Look at that, a couple of kids and they've given money, even though they're probably skins. Still, some even get probably got a lot of satisfaction out of them. Listen, you listen. We are right in it. Why? What have we done? Look, I just thought... Well, it was just a favour, wasn't it, eh? I just wanted to give him that sort of, you know, injection of cash flow and that. Don't tell me, Jimmy. Mix house. Mix house? By mix house, you mean you screwed it and pinched all his gear? You pillock, I knew it was you. You know he's got no insurance, don't you? Well, I wasn't to know, was I, eh? That's supposed to be every householder's what's it, isn't it? Responsibility. Oh, well, maybe you should have flogged him some before you screwed his house. Oh, well, it's no use just getting at me, is it? Oh, so it's Mick's fault? Well, maybe. Just a bit. Yeah, well, maybe not at all. And maybe you should get back there and tell him what you've done. And maybe I will. All right, boys, what are you two scheming about? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know, eh, Mick? <laughs> You're a real tosspot, you know that. No use insulting me. What are we going to do? Oh, oh. Tell you what. I'll get hold of a van and we'll get the stuff back before he knows anything about it. No, Jimmy, you can leave me out of it. The police are involved now. Since then, bad. I'm calling in all those favours that you owe me. And there must be hundreds of them over the years. Name one. Uh, look, I'm not Mr. Memory Man, you know. I don't want those kids of Mick's suffering another night without their telly and all their other gear. Oh, so it's the kids now, is it? Of course, it'd have nothing to do with the fact that Mick's gonna break your neck when he finds out. All right, fair point. But it's secondary. Come on, Sin. This is your chance to help Mick out of a predicament, isn't it? Look, we'll get hold of a van, get all the stuff back to his house before he knows anything about it, right? And he'll just think that some thieves have read about it in the paper and felt sorry for him. Oh, come on, Sin. Trust me. Hello, Max. Hello, Susanna. Hello, you two. Oh, oh. You look smart. <laughs> oh. David, uh, <laughs> you know Susanna, my, um... Uh, yes, of course. Hello. You're looking as delightful as ever. <laughs> Thank 
you. I believe you're back from Spain for good now. Yes, yes. Jean and I are cluttering up this place. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> if people ask real estate prices for property, they'd be out of here in no time at all. Not that there's any rush, of course. Right, I'll, uh, I'll put the kettle on. Hmm. Good work, side, buddy. I don't see why not. Thomas is out there with his groom. Good luck to they go, Spurs. <laughs> go easy, you two. <laughs> They're a real pair of live wires, aren't they? You're telling me. <laughs> so, how have you been keeping? We haven't seen much of you recently. Well, you can see how she's been keeping Max. She's looking wonderful. Oh, hello, Susanna. Hello, Jean. I'm glad you came over. We've got some Easter eggs for the children. Oh, thanks. Will we be seeing you over Easter? Well, that's uh, partly why I'm here. Andrew, my uh, boyfriend, well, man friend, has invited me to the Cotswolds for the weekend, and I was wondering if the children could stay here. Uh, well, it's a little difficult, space being what it is. Oh, don't worry about us, Max. Um, I mean, we can sort out sleeping arrangements. Yes, of course we can. It'll be a bit of an adventure for the kids, and for us. Oh, are you sure? Well, as long as it's all right with Max, I'm sure Patricia won't mind. Yes. Yes, of course. A couple of more bits to go, Sin, and it'll be the best Crimbo pleasant Mick has ever had. Hey, Jimmy, do us a favour, mate. You know, if you've got another idea like this, just give me enough time to be out the country, will you? Hey. Behave, will ya? You worry too much. Get on with it. Dad, there's someone in the house, the back. Let's get here, yeah? Go knock on front just door, quick. Hey, whoa! Oh, ah! Mick! Mick! Hey. Mick, you're gonna kill him! What are you doing here? What's going on? I can explain. This had better be good. We're just putting it back, that's all. It shouldn't have been taken out in the first place. What the hell are you playing at? I'm just doing what your Alice paid me to do. Alice? Yeah, look, before you went away, Alice bunged him a few bobs to screw the house. I don't care who was behind it. You just don't do things like that. All I was doing was trying to help get out of a hole. Oh, by screwing my house? By letting the kids come back and see everything gone? You need your head testing you, Jimmy. And I can't believe you were involved in this. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Listen, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Look, he had nothing to do with taking the stuff out. I persuaded him to help me bring it all back in when you told me you had no insurance. Yeah, and I shouldn't have listened to you. OK, all right. I've made a mess of things. But my heart was in the right place, wasn't it? Yeah, well, a pity your brain's in your back pocket. Oh, so that's all the thanks I get, is it? Brilliant. That's all I need. Why, what's up? Right. That's gone far enough. Why? What's happened? Mr. Rogers wasn't in, Dad. Simba, get the kids in the van, will you? I need a lift. Come on, hey, um, listen, Mick, I've, I've got to get it back in a bit. Hey, Jimmy, you don't really want to fall out with me, do you? Uh, where is it you want to go? You'll see. Just get in the van. Like that. Why? What's happened? Karen very kindly popped into the office today and told me, or rather it slipped out, that she was leaving the partnership and taking up a job in London. What? When was this arranged? Oh, when she was down in London, sorting out work for us. I mean, things are just so difficult, and the partnership's only gone through the first quarter. No, come on, don't upset yourself. We'll get by. I just feel such a bloody fool, especially since she was hiding here from me. I suppose there's no point crying over spilt milk. Are you expecting someone? Yes, Jean and David had invited Susanna and the kids for dinner. Well, they'd have been and gone. Well, they're at the park with your mum and dad. Oh, Max, I really, really could do without this. I'm sorry, but they are part of my life, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Hey, look, for Easter. Can we just get away? You, me and Thomas. Well... Hey, oi! Oh, hey. Hello, you gorgeous thing. Oh, have you been in the park? Oh, look at your lipstick. Hello, Hello. Mm. You better go with Granddad. Get your hands washed. Yeah, come on, then. You're Upstairs, so you lot. Get your hands washed. Here we go. Come on. Hello, Patricia. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, darling. Everything all right? Yeah, just a few work problems. I'll tell you later. I'll put the kettle on. How's your health? Not too bad, thanks. 
Max tells me your business is managing to keep its head above water despite the recession. Yeah, well, it's been quite hard going, but I suppose everyone's in the same boat. Gosh, oh, that lot are a handful, I tell you. Is that because you overexcite them? No, not at all. They're just excited about being here, aren't they? They'll settle down over the weekend. Weekend? Yes, Max has kindly agreed to have Matthew and Emily for the weekend. Well, I take a much-needed break. I was just about to tell you as everyone came in. It'll be good fun. Morning, Susan. Morning. Morning. Hey, Mick, come on, just think about this, will ya? He's right, you know, mate. At the end of my tether, thinking about things. Excuse me, mate. Look, I've just received this from your company. Just one moment, sir. Please. Look, Mick, just give him a chance, will ya? You'd think I was deliberately trying to do him out of money, wouldn't you? What? What's that letter about, anyway? Look, that the starting court proceedings to repossess the bungalow. Oh, repossessing me? After all the time I spent trying to keep the house together for me and these kids. You know, I nearly get jailed for protecting me house. Some racist tries to bear me out. You and your stupid plan. Look, Mick, don't lose your cool. Just explain all that to them. Do you think they really want to know? Oh, they want my house. That's all they're interested in there is profit. Oh, do you know how sad? Don't worry, babe. I'll sort it out. I'll keep my dignity in all this, haven't I? Want to drag me through the courts, do they? And then they ask me to wait. Chills. Oh, uh, sorry to bother you again, but I won't keep you too long. Excuse me. Why don't you press a couple of buttons on your fancy computer there? I'm sure you'll find out who I am. Mick Johnson's a name, Six Brookside Clubs. This is my daughter, Gemma, and my son, Leo. And when my name does come up, you'll see that I'm one of the millions struggling to pay the mortgage, trying to keep a roof over my kid's head. Well, I can't anymore. I give in. You've won. I'm knackered. So there's the keys to you. It's just bricks and mortar to you, isn't it? But it's a home to me and these kids. I beg you. I you know what? I've sat here like you. I've listened to them go on about options if things become difficult. Well, it's all crap. You know what that should read? You know what that should read? That should read, we're here to screw you, because believe me, they will. Oh, yeah, they care about you until you sign on the dotted line. And then after that, it's, it's nothing. All they care about then is the shareholders. You know, the government say things like, uh, we're doing something about repossession. But don't believe them because they're doing nothing. So you sleep peacefully in your bed tonight, because there's another family out on the street. Hey, good one, Mick. Nice one. Bloody hell, Mick. You can't go on the street with the gents. Hey, I've no intention of it. Now, we'll get back to Art and load the rest of my gear on the van. I don't suppose there's any point in me asking uh, where we're going. Hi. Busy day? Yeah. Oh, I'd have thought Beth would be home by now. She's in there reading a book. Oh, uh, she's got some sort of problem with her family. <sighs> yeah. This place is becoming like a home for wasted strays. Sorry, I didn't mean anything by that. It's okay. As soon as I can, I'll get a job and pay my way. I know. Feet? <sighs> Look, um, I've been giving this marriage a convenience idea of yours some thought. You'd thought about it? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, not for me. But I was thinking if we could, we might be able to find someone who would be willing to do it for money. For money? Well, yeah. It might be easier to find someone to do it for money than anything else. I've done a bit of digging, and you'd have to stay married for just five years, and then you can divorce. Well, I hadn't thought of a financial arrangement. Well, it makes sense, really. I was just wondering how much someone would be willing to accept. It's a nice idea, but it won't work, really. You know I haven't got a penny. Uh, that's gonna get off now. Thanks for letting me stay at such short notice. It's okay. I don't really feel like going back, but as long as my mum's there, at least I have to face them on my own. Well, if you need me, just give us a shout. And I'll be in the pizza parlour tonight if you fancy coming round. Thanks. See ya. I couldn't really refuse her, could I? Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Well, you did. Where's Mum? She's gone into town. Where have you been? Your mum's been worried sick. I stayed out at a friend's on the sofa. You should have called. Why should you be concerned? 
Because I'm your dad and I care about you. Don't say that, please. I mean it, Beth. <laughs> no, you don't. It's just a convenience, that's all. Your way of worming yourself back into our lives. It's not a convenience, Beth. I want to be back in your lives. Well, it won't work. We don't want you back. Well, that's what you're saying up front, but deep down, inside, you know you want me back. We need to be a proper family again. No, we don't. I didn't want you to come here. None of us did. But you missed me, Beth. I know you did. Say it. Beth, just say it. No. It's taken years to get where I am. I hated myself for letting you touch me. I trusted you, Dad. I believed your lies. I believed that you did it because you loved me. I did. I do love you. But not enough to realize about how much you were hurting me. I wasn't violent, Beth. You didn't need to be. You were my dad. If you said it, I believed it. I trusted you, Dad. But you raped me. It was one weak moment, but it wasn't rape. Oh, so what do you want to call it, then? Incest? Fooling around, interfering with me? Because that's just nonsense. It's just your way of coping with it. But I'm left to deal with the horror. And the nightmares and the guilt. Don't you think I felt the guilt? I couldn't stand what I was doing. But the drink... Oh, don't blame alcohol. It was one thing to have you pour me with the smell of drink on your breath. But don't forget the quiet moments. The supposed birthday kisses. It only happened once, Beth. Once? You don't know about all the nights when I lay in bed petrified. Worried in case you came in to do it again. I can't forget it. I still need help. No. No, you don't need help. What do I need, then? You. You'd like to sleep with me again, wouldn't you? No, 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 no. No, that's all of my past. I've changed. I, I had treatment in prison. Did you? How? How? Nobody knows a bloody thing about it. You went to prison for beating up Mum, not for raping your daughter. No. Even Mum can't let that out in the open. What the hell's going on? He's gonna, he's gonna break the door in. Alan, take it in the back, will you? Yes, come on, let's go and sit down. All right, hold on. I call the police? No, but if he tries to get in, just death him, all right? I want to see Beth. She's busy. Don't take me for a pillock, son. I want to talk to her. If she wants to see you, she'll come round in her own good time. Who the hell are you two to tell me what my daughter should do? We're just friends of this, that's all. Well, I'm her father, and I want to see her now. Listen, just accept it, mate. She doesn't want to see you. Look. I'm going to give you one more chance, and if I have to fight my way in here, believe me, I will. You step one foot in this house, and I'll call the police. Okay. My mistake. But I won't forget this. Look at that. I thought he was going to kick off, Dan. He looked crazy. To see why she wouldn't make up with him. I'm sorry I had to bring all this trouble here. It's all right. Yeah, don't worry about it. I don't know what it's all about, but you're welcome to the couch again. But you should let your mother know where you are. Thanks. What's the score then? It's simple. Help me get the gear out the van and bring it up here. Oh, Mick, behave, will ya? You can't squat in the flat above your own pizza place. I don't care, Jimmy. 
We need a roof over our head. Have you moved, Dad? You bet we have, babe. Come here, son. Welcome to your new home. God help anyone who tries to get us out. Sorry, I did knock. I just wanted to repay your kindness and hospitality towards me by bringing you breakfast in bed. Uh, Trev, I, I prefer it if you didn't come in here. You've really got to believe me when I say I'm different. Being in that prison has brought out a few home truths. I know you must find it hard to accept that. But at least allowing me to stay here means that you're moving towards accepting some of the changes in me. It's all happening too quickly. I... Nothing's happening, love. You've just been kind enough to allow me to stay for a couple of nights. That's all. Today I go. I don't know where, but I'll keep my promise. I shouldn't really have allowed you to stay. If the Shackletons found out, I'd be in breach of the agreement. Yes, but the trouble with do-gooders like the Shackletons is that they won't accept when a man's done his punishment. And keeping him from his family only piles on the agony. They're only working in our best interests. Yes, but is that what you really want? Me on the edges of your lives forever. I mean, I really hurt inside over what happened between me and Beth. But she's so unforgiving. She's still so young. She doesn't want me in her life, I can tell. God knows what she's told those people next door about me. This is what I wanted to avoid, all this tension. She stayed out two nights on the run now. OK, it is only next door and she's 17, but... Neither of us want that, do we? We want to be a proper family again, don't we? All right, Frank. Hi, Mick. Let's go with your place. Looks empty. Yeah, it is, mate. I uh, got a letter off the Berlin Society yesterday. They were ready to repossess. So I moved me and the kids in above this place. I finished with the bungalow, Frank. I mean, I was in real heavy debt with the repayments, you know what I mean? Bad news, that, mate. But no man should lose his own just because of a poxy bit of money. And all these supposed schemes to help you out, it's all a load of garbage. Yeah, I know. But at least I've got somewhere to stay. Yeah, you were looking to get this place arranged so fast, weren't you? It wasn't exactly arranged, Frank. But, I mean, I had nowhere else I could go. I mean, there's not that much room at Marianne's place, so this was the next best thing. Oh, so, uh, you're going through some tough times at the moment, mate? Yeah, there's worse off than me, Frank. Yeah. Look, you should get yourself out, Mick. Give yourself a break. <laughs> Why not come down and leave this night with me and Lynn? Oh, yeah, they take uh, brass buttons, do they? Yeah, thanks, anyway. All right, mate. Well, listen, if you need a hand with anything, Give me a show, won't you? Cheers, Frank. See you, mate. See you, mate. Hi. Hi, Max. Have a word. For sure. I've uh, just been informed by our so-called caretaker that you've taken residence in the flat upstairs. That's right. Well, what the hell are you playing at? I mean, it's illegal and irresponsible, especially with you having two young children. It was the children I did it for. You have a bungalow next door to mine. Max, you know the problems I've been having. 
I've come to you more than once for advice. Mick, there are plenty of people with mortgage problems. They intended to repossess, Max. I fought like mad to stay in that house, somewhere decent to bring the kids up, and they wanted to take it all away from me. But squatting isn't the solution. No, 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 I won't be squatting, Max. And I want you to sort all that out. Well, if the place isn't being used, you might as well get some rent for it. Come on, Max, do us a deal with this place. What do you want me to do, Max, beg? Oh, of course not. Well, do it all up front, then get the paper sorted out. It can't be too expensive, can it? Come on, Max. I'll tell you what, uh, I'll even fix the door myself. <laughs> all right, I'll sort out an agreement with you, but please, ask first in the future. If you'd come to me in the first place, I could have squared it all up with you. Officially. Cheers, Max. So it's Bluff's hard fella or not at all, what? Oh, he's off his cake, mate. He came that close to giving us a slap last night, you know. So you and her getting serious, then? Well, we're just having a laugh, like. She's all right her, isn't she? Yeah, I'm telling you. Me hard fella made a good choice when he picked her. I've always fancied going out with an older woman. You know, he's 21, you know. Oh, she looks well older. Well, anyway, you couldn't handle her. Oh, and you could, like, yeah, give her half the chance, yeah. She wouldn't look at you. Hey, I stand as good a chance as any. And anyway, I reckon these mature women fancy a bit of younger stuff. You wouldn't have the bottle to ask her anyway. It doesn't matter, does it? I'm going out with Beth. Oh, the one you're having a laugh with. Yeah, all right. Hiya. Oh, love. What's it look like from where you are? Great. I haven't seen anything so good for ages. Have you, Mike? Yeah, it looks fine to me. Good. Do you want to get a town off from your dad? Hey, listen, if he gives you any problems, just send him in to see me, all right? Oh, I love a commanding man. Is my dad there? No, he's gone to church with your mum for Good Friday. He'll be back later. Uh, listen, I was wondering, do you fancy going out for a drink sometime? Wine bar, something like that? Me and you? Well, yeah, if you fancy it. Oh, I mean, it's very nice of you and everything, but... Well, I've got this affinity with champagne, and I don't really think a student grant is stretched too many bottles of them. And, well, anyway, I've got someone else. What did she say? Well, she said she would have gone out for a bevy, but she's seen someone else, like. At least you had a go. I'll tell you what, he's a lucky man, whoever he is. I think I'll go with you to the Legion tonight. It was good fun last week. I think it's all right with you. Yeah, if you like. What time will you be finished here, then? About four-ish. Didn't think it would take that long. Well, it's a fairly long service. Then I want to have a word with the priest afterwards about some flowers for Easter Sunday. Listen, though, do you think it makes good business sense giving them away? Well, I'd like the altar to look nice. And I do stand a very good chance of getting a regular order. Method in your madness, eh? Well, it's not just the flowers. I still like coming to church, you know. I suppose you'll be lighting a candle for your derrick when you get in there, will you? No doubt I shall. I'll light one for you as well. And I hope now that Margaret and Derek are going their own ways, that Derek will go back to being a priest again. Ah, yeah, but will he have him back, though? That's the question, isn't it? I mean, after all, he was sort of defrocked, wasn't he? He was not defrocked. And I'll take him back tomorrow. Very forgiving, you Catholics, aren't you? Yes, very. Got to move with the times. I'll have you now. Bet you won't allow women priests like I'm of, do you? Anyway, what time do you say you'll be finished here? Are you deaf? Four-ish, and I'll walk home. Describe the functions of the hippo... hippo... <laughs> hypo! Hypothalamus. Well, what's that, like? If you give us a chance, I'll tell you. Oh, I don't know how you can do all this stuff, you know. Oh, too hard, is it? Is that why you do all the arty-farty media stuff? Get out of it. That's what all you lot miss out on. A bit of arguments. What lot? Tea phalets, trainee doctors. <laughs> I'm not there yet. If you don't give us a hand with this revision, I'll never pass my levels. Oh, I couldn't be a doctor. All that cutting people open. Yeah. It's not just cutting people open. And if I get into med school and pass, I want to be a paediatrician. All those little kids. Oh, no. I thought it'd gone by now. It's not your dad again, is it? Yeah, look, I don't want to see him. I hope he doesn't start nothing. Look, I don't want any trouble, but Beth doesn't want to see you. That's understandable, considering my behaviour yesterday. Look, um, I'm going now, but I just wanted to apologise to you for the way I behaved. I was completely out of order. I let my emotions rule my head. And OK, so I've been having a, a bad time of it recently, but there was no need to abuse you. Eh, uh, yeah, well, it was... You don't have to say anything. I was just anxious to see Beth after our falling out yesterday. Well, she was upset, you know. Yeah. Fathers and daughters, eh? <laughs> I do get possessive, I know. I want so much for her. If she is in there, would you just say that I said sorry?
turned on the charm, didn't he? You sounded like he meant it. You don't know him, Mike. He's very clever. Well, he said he was going, so it might be an idea if you went and said to that. Why'd you keep wanting me to get old palsy with him? He was jailed for beating my mum senseless. Well, I reckon if your dad was the same bloke he was when he was beating your mum up, he'd have laid into it as soon as he saw her, wouldn't he? All right, OK, even if I'm wrong, there's no need to let him dominate your life so much that you'd have to sleep on somebody's couch. Don't let him intimidate you so much. Listen, um, I was wondering if it's worthwhile staying open all day, you know. Good Fridays are usually quiet. Oh, we might get a last-minute mad rush for Easter eggs. Nah, no, I can't see that. Actually, I thought maybe we could, uh, well, go for that Chinese we were speaking about. When? Well, today. Now, you know, because, uh, I've got to be back for the Legion tonight. Just close the shop and go. Hey, I'm the boss, aren't I? And if the boss can't close down his business to show appreciation to his favourite member of staff... Only member of staff. Yeah, one's enough for me. So where are we going, then? Well, I thought we could go to the, uh, Golden Dragon. I believe it's very nice. Sounds fine. Lovely. And, um, well, I think we ought to keep it our little secret, don't you? <laughs> I'm in your hands, Ron. Just gonna put some lippy on. Yeah. Hasn't he gone yet? Beth, you can't keep up all this to and fro into next door. I know. I'm sorry. But I couldn't possibly stay in the same house as him. Your dad told me you had words. I don't want to talk about it. OK. But staying out of the house won't do any good. I want to apologise for yesterday's turnout. I know. I heard you talking to Mike next door. And I did mean it. If you mean it, you'll leave us alone. I suppose it's all that I deserve. Um, look, I better be going. I'm very embarrassed about this, but could you lend us a couple of pounds to get into town and look for some digs? I'll get my purse. I will pay you back. It's all right. Do you mind if I leave my bags and I get sorted out? OK. Thanks. It was just the break I needed. And whether I get sorted out or not, I won't pressure you for a bed again. And I want you to know from here, you can trust me. I'll call back for the bags. See my eggs in here. What do they look like? I had two eggs in here. I wanted an omelet. Nah, not guilty. I'll ask Mike. Mike, have you seen Peter's eggs? What shape are they? Oh, very funny. Real pair of comedians. Were they your eggs like? Yes, they were. Oh, sorry, I thought they were Keith's. You never asked me if you could have them. Well, they weren't yours, were they? It could have been. I just wanted an omelet. Hasn't Anna got a couple of eggs you could borrow? Anna hasn't got a thing. She shares my food. Pretty grim for her, isn't it? Hey, I tell you what, it's a pity she can't get a paper round. Bring in a few extra bob for her. Suppose if you're desperate for money, you'll do anything. Yeah. Um, how far would you go to earn some extra cash? Depends on how desperate I was. Would you marry for money? <laughs> no chance. Ain't hey, women do it all the time. Yeah, no strings attached. Just, uh, you know, marriage of convenience. Say if one of these, um, hypothetically, one of the, these Bosnian refugee women came to the country and wanted to stay. And the best way of doing it was to get married. Those strings attached. How much would you take off her? Bosnian women. 
Are they good looking? I've seen a couple of crackers. No, seriously, you have to be married for five years and then you could divorce. Oh, I don't know. I'd need to give that a bit of thought. Well, ask your mates at college as well, see what they'd do. Instead of getting a student loan. Who's all this for, then? Well, no one. Just like I said. Hypothetical. Sounds a bit iffy to me. Same here. You don't think it's uh, our Polish housekeeper, do you? Well, he doesn't know any hypothetical Bosnians, does he? Well, putting two and two together, I'd say she overstayed an official visit to this country. Yeah, let's keep this quiet, eh? Hello again. Hello, you two. Here, I'll take that. Oh, thanks. There's nothing much here for the two of them. Oh, there's another bag yet. Andrew's bringing it in. Hi. Hi. Andrew? Mum's boyfriend plays rugby. Here he is. <laughs> You must be Max. Yes, pleased to meet you at last. And Patricia, I take it. Yes, how do you do? Andrew, Andrew Carroll. Oh, please sit down. Thanks. Thanks. She so don't do that. Oh, he's a bit excitable at the moment. <laughs> so I believe you're a surveyor, but in the development business. And um, what line of business are you in? I'm an actor. An actor. Yes. And. What are you acting at the moment, or are you resting? <laughs> no, a um, couple of minor projects on at the moment, but uh, a big international tour coming up soon. Oh, he's so modest. He's worked for some of the best rep theatres in the country, and he's taking a company to the States. Boston, to be exact. <laughs> Very good. So, have you anything on? Yes. Yes, we have a development going on in um, uh, St. Helens. Three or four shops. Yeah, well, I suppose you have to take what you can get these days, big or small. Yes, yes, I know. Lift me up, Dad. No, no, not now, Matthew. Come here, Tiger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this fellow in the bag said, he said, have you got anything to prove that she is your wife? I said, of course I have. Bags under my eyes and an empty wallet. <laughs> look at her, look, she's down there now, busy working out what goes better with arsenic. Chicken curry on us, aren't you? <laughs> now, be fair, she's all right, my missus, aren't you, darling? If you take it the right way, by the throat. <laughs> right, now, if we set it, um... On with the music. Right, take it away, fellas. Hiya. I've saved some seats. You want to drink the... Oh, yeah, gin and tonic, please. Hello, Bev. I didn't expect to see you here. Well, she gave me and Frank a ring and asked if she could come. We didn't want to sit in on our own. I didn't think this would be your scene. Oh, I'm full of surprises, me. Hello, everyone. Hiya, boss. I oh, love you calling him that. Didn't expect you. Can I get rid of you? Came to see this brilliant comp here. Do you know him? <laughs> Do you want a drink now? I'd love one, actually, Frank. I'm parched. Yeah, we'll be due to hard work, will really. we? Where were you scarving today? How do you mean, Scarlett? I called out to the shop with some fuse and the place was locked up. Oh, yeah, well, we were that slack, you know. I give uh, the afternoon off and decided to do some stock taking in the back. End of the financial year and that, you know. Oh, you get it easy, Bev. I have to do the stock taking with the shop open. Well, some things you just can't do with the shop open, can you? <laughs> There's a change. See you again, eh? See ya. What do you want to know? into the house, it looks empty. I got a letter from the building society. They wanted to repossess, take me to court, all that nonsense. So I went round there and told them they could shove the mortgage. You can't do that. Well, I've done it. Handed the keys back, the bungalow is no longer mine. You don't just give up your home like that, Mick. I was up to air with it, Marianne. I didn't want to have to go to court begging and pleading with someone in a suit about my finances and, most importantly, my kid's future. So where are they? Where are you staying? Above this place. Kicked the door in, didn't I? Moved me and the kids in lock, stock and barrel. That's illegal. I know, but I was desperate. Cheers, mate. Don't worry. Max Farnham sorting it all out. Once you make up your mind to do something, there's no stopping you, is there? Winner takes all. Every time. Well, I better go and check on the kids, eh? Through here, is it? Yeah. Who knows? I may close early tonight. Now behave, you children, up there, otherwise the Easter Bunny won't come. I think we're going away now, Max. Oh, right. Well, uh, very pleased to meet you. Bye, Patricia. Bye, Andrew. See you again. 
Look, uh, Susanna was a bit concerned about how you'd react to meeting me, her boyfriend. I'm just glad we can be so civil about these things. Yes. <sighs> well, enjoy your Easter. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Glad we could be so civil. Who does he think he is? Arthur and Tommy, folks. Well done, lads. Superb. Excellent. Right, now then, uh, we're just going to get one or two more tickets in and then we'll be ready for the raffle. But in the meantime, without further ado, let's boogie on down to the disco. He's a good compare, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. Don't tell him, though. You won't hear the last of it. <laughs> Did you hear about Mick moving out the bungalow? No. Yeah, he's moved in above the pizza parlour. Well, how was I? Not as good as Brucey. No, but I've got on my own here, though, haven't I, love? Fancy a dance day? Oh, no, I'm not in the mood. Oh, come on. Oh, go on. We'll dance with you, won't we, Frank? I was just going to go with the alien. Oh, well, I'll give you a hand. No, you're all right. Bev, will you go and dance with him? Keep him out of trouble. Do you think I'll keep up this time? Go on, teach him a lesson. I hope you're fit. Hey, look. I'm glad you're settling down well and getting on with Ron in the shop. He's a good boss. Same again, is it? Please. So, how are things between you and Ron now? Pretty much the same. We've got lots to talk about without me saying anything. Just chit-chat, if you know what I mean. Oh, it'll come right, Dee. Well, having Bev on the scene seems to have made a difference to him. How do you mean? Well, I think part of the problem is not having someone in the shop who stayed there. A lot of this started when Jackie Corkill left. I hated working in the shop. Marcy didn't last very long, so fingers crossed. If Bev stays, well, then Ron won't be so stressful. Then things might be better between us. I mean, he's perked up already. <laughs> that was close, wasn't it? What was? Oh, uh, don't tell me you've forgotten our little meal this afternoon already, have I don't you? know what you're talking about. Um, is there any chance of a bit of an advance on my wages? I'm almost broke. But I've been pants only paid you last night. I've spent it. Do you know what? You're like my daughter Jacqueline, you are. Well, not exactly like her. <laughs> She's always short of money as well. Does she spend all the money on sexy underwear, though? <sighs> Actually, I've, uh, I've left me money in the dressing room, so uh, if you'd like to come round there, I can show you backstage as well. I'll tell you what, I'll go after this dance and you follow me round in a couple of minutes, eh? Another little secret, then? <sighs> Oh, Max, if you could hear yourself. What? Why are you reacting like this? What? I'm not reacting like anything. I mean, look, did you see the way the children were all over him? Come here, Tiger. And Susanna, acting like some smitten schoolgirl. Max, she's a free agent. She can do as she pleases, with whom she pleases. Oh, sorry, it's just that... Well, it's just a shock to see my kids with another chat, that's all, you know. Max, uh... Well, he's not with them this weekend, is he? I'm sorry, but... Come in, come in. Hey, they certainly know how to look after the stars, don't they? Yeah, well, most people don't know what it's like being backstage, but that doesn't stop you feeling like a star, does it? <laughs> I always fancy being in showbiz. I can sing a bit like, but never had a chance. Hey, you certainly look the part, though, when you're up on that stage. Well, I suppose in a way I always felt that I'd finish up doing something like this, you know, showbiz. Oh. Be enough. Yeah, great. Thanks. Is that it, like? Is that better? Well, for starters. Five minutes, Rob. Yeah, I'll be there now. That's showbiz. Pity. I was looking forward to the finale. Listen, we uh, must do this again sometime. Wouldn't have it any other way.
Oh, hi, love. Morning, love. Not here, Beth. Aren't you pleased to see me? Yeah, of course I am, but not in the shop. I'm to see you after what happened on Friday. I can't stop thinking about that kiss. How about you? Oh, yeah. All right, Jim. Yeah, yeah, not so bad. You know how it is. You? Hi, I'm, uh, Never better, actually. Dead out there today, isn't it? Ah, uh, oh, well, it's bank holiday, isn't it? Hardly seems worthwhile opening. Well, I... Don't worry. I'm sure we'll find plenty to do. Aye, aye. I'd watch ahead if I was you, Bonnie. <laughs> See you. ta -da, Jim. Oh, look, about that kiss. I've thought of nothing else all weekend. Yeah, but does it mean that we're, well, you know... An item? Yeah, of course it does. What kind of a girl do you think I am? Just wish we weren't stuck in this shop all day, that's all. I hope you're paying me double for coming in on a bank holiday. No problem. Don't worry. I'll make sure it's worth your while. And how Margaret's heading on? I'm sure you're not expecting her to work today, are you? No, she's moving into her new digs. Mm. Why is there never anything on the TV on bank holidays? Oh, there's usually plenty of sport. Hmm. That and old films. When's Susanna coming to pick up the kids? Mm. Oh, she said she'd ring when her and her beloved Andrew were on their way. Even there, however. So see, it's going to rain later on. Is where? Try it, Jack. How would you like to go to Florida this afternoon? Max, I'm trying to work. I've got a business to run. <laughs> Correction, to get off the ground. Fly drive. £150. Was... Oh, missed it. Missed what? The plane to take us off to sunnier climbs. It's just taken off from Manchester. I knew. Good idea, isn't it? Oh, if we're flexible about time, might pick up a real bargain. Well, how about it? Florida. Don't you think I should try and earn some money first? Oh, we could do with a break. It not cost as much. Oh, is that Matthew fighting Thomas again? <laughs> it's not always Matthew's fault. Oh, come on. I'll see what's happening. I suppose you fancy taking them out of my way for a bit, do you? Mm -hmm. They could do with some fresh air. They've been cooped up indoors all weekend. What? Still going rain, though. And while you're gone, I'll pack their bags and then maybe we can have our house back. Oh. Does that mean your parents have given notice to quit these premises? I didn't hear you complaining while my father looked after your unruly kids all weekend. Right, work. A garage. I exchanged it for some money. It's an old custom. Well, you didn't say you were going. Come on. I didn't know what, so we fixed the price. Got a bit of character, isn't it? So this is where our rent's going, is it? That's right. No, I uh, I needed to get to work. That's all right for some, isn't it? Well, you work hard and pass your exams like a good boy, and you too can become a bloated capitalist. Hiya. Hiya. Right. Fine, thanks. Been somewhere nice? Well, we were going to, but we didn't get far. We took one look at those clouds and decided to cancel our thrill a minute day out. Where to? Ottersburg Promenade. <laughs> Don't worry, my love. We'll save that treat for another day. Come on inside before we get soaked. Bye. See ya. Come round later. Go to town or something, eh? Yeah, all right, then. Things all right, Addy. <sighs> well, we've had a nice, quiet weekend. I just hope things stay that way. So, uh, what do you think of the landlord's car, then? <laughs> well, very green. How did you get in? The door was locked. I had a key. Are you coming back to live with us, Dad? No, he's not. You had no business taking a key. Oh, Mum. You shouldn't have come back. But I haven't anywhere else to go. I thought you understood that. Have you looked? Have you tried? You wouldn't want me to live in the places that I've seen. But hadn't we better get that door shut? What's he doing here? He just came. Come on in. You're going to get wet. Get rid of him, Mum. Don't talk to Dad like that. Get out! Just get out! Beth, please! Don't leave him alone! Why is she like this, Mum? Let's just discuss this, please, Beth. You don't know what he's like, Rachel. You don't know what he's done. Go on, get out! We can't let him back in. Calm Love down. Not again. Calm down. This is silly, man. He talked to her. All right. All right, you've had your little game. Can I come in now, please? You're upsetting Rachel. Why are you always so horrible to Dad? He's getting soaked. Let him. That's nothing to what he's done to us. There you go, Norma. Thanks a lot, love. Thanks. Bye. Sit down now. 
There you go. That looks a bit better. It most certainly does. Look, can't we go somewhere a bit more private? It's teaming out. I meant indoors. You have got a shop to run. Yeah, but you said that, well, you and me are sort of together, don't we? Well, we can be together. Here. Yes, but people keep coming in and out, don't We've they? We've got plenty of time. Have we? All the time we need. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go into the shop now. Come on, behave yourselves. Well, 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 if it isn't Mary Poppins. No, come on, stop that. They're just a bit excited at the moment, I'm afraid. They've uh, been to the park, but rain stopped play. Yeah, well, you seem to have a right handful there. Yes, well, they're uh, trying to get them out of Patricia's hair for a few hours. Uh, actually, their grandfather gave them some money and it's burning a hole in the pockets. Thank goodness, you're open. Yes, well, I have noticed that you only seem to come in here when everywhere else is shut. Right, have you chosen what you wanted? Yes! There you go, Thomas. Right, give the man the money. I got it. Thank you. Good boy. Um, thanks very much. Bye! Take your place with a nice man. Bye. Hello. Bye. So what do you mean about people coming in and out all the time? That's to the excitement, doesn't it? Yes, Beverly, but some of the people that come in here are my neighbours. I don't want them talking. Especially the likes of Maxie there. You have to be careful while you're in here. Sorry. Just can't seem to keep my hands off you. Look, why don't I just shut this place up and then we can... No rush, is there? Got the rest of our lives. There you go. Drink now and you'll feel better. Thanks. Is he still there? Don't look at him. Don't even think about him. Be cold. So, all we've got to do is be strong. And then he'll go away. Peter, I'm just going out to ask if I can get my mum to do my washing. Yeah, right. Worrying about your new car getting wet? No, look at this. It's Beth's dad. What's he doing? I don't know, he's just sitting there staring. You reckon he's drunk, do you? He's on the camera and hanging on the door again. He's not even supposed to be around at the Jordash's place. Why not? There's been a bit of trouble between him and Beth's mum. You hear? Well, Mr. Jordash has done time for wife battery. Wife battery? That explains a lot. Still, he can't do any harm while he's stuck out there, can he? Just give himself pneumonia. God, wife battery. Right, I'm gonna shoot off. Just keep an eye on him, will you? <laughs> Try and stop me. It's better than TV, this. If he gets any livelier, I'll uh, give you a shout, okay? Hey, it's great you uh, helping me get straight in. I'm glad to. What a way to spend a bank holiday. And I should be taking you out somewhere. What, and get soaked? So, are the kids settling down OK? Well, they think that playing in the pizza parlor is great. No, I didn't miss the garden, though. Wasn't there any way of keeping the bungalow? No, I had no choice. It was either give her up or be dragged through the courts for it. Mm. I had to think about the kids, so I decided to cut my losses. We were right, impulsive pair, aren't we? You giving up your home like that? Me calling off the wedding at the last minute? <laughs> Yeah, two of a kind, eh? Yeah. Still, had a good time in London, though, didn't we? Yeah, it was great. Your mum and dad were great with my two. I was a bit unsure how they'd react, though, when uh, you told them about me and you. I didn't know what to say. They were still getting over the shock of me calling off the wedding. Yeah. Just as well, they like you, isn't it? Of course. I mean, how could they resist my charm, <laughs> my good looks and my modesty? <laughs> I'm a death. Let's see if that is. Morning, playmates. Happy Easter, all that sort of thing, you know. It's Easter bunny. Uh, listen, Keith said it was all right for me to come up. Hello. Hiya. Getting settled in in there, are you? Yeah, no thanks to you. Yeah, well... Listen, Mick, can't we let bygones be bygones? Hey, rubbing my house is more than a bygone, Jimmy. Yeah, I know, but, uh, well, I'm sorry, aren't I? Yeah, so you should be. Hey, Mick, we meant well. I even had your Ellis on the phone ringing up to see how it went. Ellis? How is he? Oh, you know, sounded, uh, chirpy. Where is he? Down the smoke, staying with a few friends. Uh, he wanted me to uh, pass on his address. I'll get in touch. Yeah, I'll get in touch. So, uh, we're gonna forget what's happened then? Make a fresh start and all that? You're joking, aren't you, Jimmy? What do you want me to do? Thank you for screwing me out. I mean, you couldn't even get that scum right. Come on, it's all right, Jimmy. Come on, Mick, don't be like that. I've said I'm sorry, haven't I? So am I for not flattening you when I should have done that out. 
So does that mean you accept my apology or what? Go, Jimmy, before I have to apologise for breaking your nose. I'm gone. Tell me, Mum. Yeah, I found some. Bring it back when you're finished. Will do. Oh! Teaming down out there. Well, it doesn't team up, does it? Hello, stranger. What is it this time? <laughs> He's borrowing some soap powder. You're never doing your own washing. I wasn't up to it, Ron. It's this cold. I can't seem to shake it off. Would you like me to come round and give you some lessons on the machine, Sean? Ah, don't worry. I've well cracked it. I'll see you later. So, uh... Well, we could go out now you're home. It might make me feel better. What about the shop? I'm just dancing down out there, Dee. Oh, will you forget about the shop? You're never at home these days. And I suppose you're down the Legion tonight. Yeah, gotta go. Got a good act on, you know, for the bank holiday. Yeah. Right. Better be going. I just wanted to pop in, make sure you were all right, you know. See you later. What's the hurry? Well, things to do. <laughs> Ta-da. Is the coast clear? No, the divvy's still out there. I'll get down, he'll see you. Nah, no chance. He's been staying at the house for ages. I think he's off his key. This is ridiculous. He's been out there over an hour now. You're right, though. It's better than Sally, isn't it? <laughs> right. You gonna give me covering four when I go out with this? Hang on, Captain. <laughs> Everything all right? You locked out? I'm fine. Oh. A bit wet for sunbathing, eh? Well, so long as everything's all right. Everything's under control. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. No. He can't just stay there. He can go away, then. Look, I can understand you hating him, but he's still my husband. You've got to stop thinking like that. That's how he does it. He'll be humble and sorry and worm his way back in. Remember what he's done, Mum. We can't ever let that happen again. Susanna won't have to hang about. I guess you've got it. She'll be here by now. Well, they'll be caught in the bank holiday rush back. Hello. Ah, Susanna. Well, that is a bit short notice, isn't it? Oh, yes, they're fine. They're sitting right... Yes, but... How long for? Oh, I see, well... Well, I suppose it'll have to be. Yes, OK. Bye-bye, Susanna. And then that was Susanna. I gathered that. Don't tell me they're going to be late. Worse. I'm afraid she wants us to have the children for a bit longer. How much longer? Oh, another day or so, I'm afraid. Um, Matthew, Emily, that was your mummy. I'm afraid she's not coming today. A few more days? She can't do this. Well, I'm afraid she has done. Andrew the Thespian has got an audition in London and she wanted to go with him. Oh, and you agreed, just like that? Well, you know Susanna. She didn't give me a chance not to. Oh, I'm sorry, because she's fallen for a struggling actor. She's decided she can just dump her kids on us whenever she likes. How long for? Another day or so, I think. How long, Max? Oh, till Thursday or Friday-ish. 
Oh, wonderful. Well, who's going to look after them? It's still the school holidays. Well, as you said, your mother and father seem to get on very well with them. Oh, yes, I think it's a terrific idea having my parents here. Right, well, I'd better look in the freezer, prepare the feeding of the 5,000. He's five today, and his mum and sister have sent in a little picture of him. For change. Thanks very much. Thanks. Try. Bye. <laughs> Just gets a bit messed up, you know, clearing boxes and that. Have you ever thought of having it, well, a bit more casual? I think it'd suit you. What you need is some gel. I don't want any of that stuff. I look like Galvin. Stardust. Who? Never mind. A bit before your time. Mm, I love hearing about the old days. Hello, Mick. What can I get you? Just some milk and bread, please, Rod. You know, the kids never stop eating. <laughs> so, how are you coping at the flat, then? Great. Marianne's helping me get sorted, you know. What, you mean the one who jilted your Alice? 93, please. She doesn't exactly deal to me. No, well, that's what it looked like at the wedding, didn't it? Well, they just decided that the, the tie wasn't right, that's all. So, uh, what's this about you and her, then? We get on. You know what it is. Oh, yeah. I do, Mick. I do. What have you been doing with your hair on it? It's all sticking up. Oh, just, uh, thought I'd try a change of image. You know how it is. Oh, I do, Ron. I do. See you later. So we're going to give this a go, then, or what? What? In the shop? Well, in the back. I was going to put the kettle on for tea, anyway. Come on. Yeah, but what about the shop? You hear the bell? You coming, or what? Dad's still out there. I know, love. He's so cute. You can go home, then. He hasn't got a home, not a proper one. Why can't we let him in, Mum? He looks so miserable. We can't leave him out there. We could just let him get dry. Let him in, Mum. No. I want my dad. One more chance. Just one more chance. He's changed. I'm sure he has. It... You must be able to see that. Please, Mum. Don't listen, do you? You just don't learn. Have I missed anything? Loads. The nuts has gone in. Bet's come out now. Must run in the family. Beth! What are you doing? You should let him in. Well, why don't you come there? And don't stand there getting soaked. Come in for a coffee or something. I don't even know where Ellis is. Yeah, not cut his throat or anything. <laughs> he fancies himself too much to do anything like this. So I can stop worrying about him then? Yeah. Oh, it wouldn't have lasted. He wasn't the settling down type. Well, he definitely wasn't your type. I mean, look at this scam he worked out with Jimmy Corkill. Mm -hmm. An insurance job. I mean, it's not even original. It's probably just his ham fisted way of trying to help you out. Yeah. Anyway, look, I better get off, OK? Oh, look, um, I want to see you again. Well, I've got a couple of evening meetings this week, but Friday? Yeah, great. Well, it's just that uh, I haven't done any causing for a while, so uh, I'll have to plan babysitters and like. Oh, so we're courting, are we? <laughs> well, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, I do. I suppose we just have to try and put all this guilt behind us, eh? See what happens. Yeah. Mm. Bye. See you Friday. I'm not going back there, not while he's still there. What's been going on? <sighs> well, it's him and my mother. She's so stupid. She keeps on letting him con her. How? Same way every time. <sighs> he looks pathetic. He says he's changed. She believes him. She calls it love. Funny kind of love. 
you reckon you should go down there and see what's going on? I can't. Well, he's still there. Oh, one of us could go with you. No, that'd only make things worse. Anyway, you don't fancy a broken nose, do you? Well, it might be better, though. You know, if you went and kept an eye on things, you'd be support for your mum. I thought I could look after her. I did try. Well, you've got to keep on trying. You're no good to a stuck here, are you? Maybe you're right. And if there's any problems, just knock on the wall. We'll come well banded, won't we? All right, then. If he does anything. Cozy in here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, little hidey hole. Bet you've taken loads of women back here, haven't you? Now, would I? Well, then. <sighs> I'm not sure. What do you think? Oh, it looks brilliant. Makes you look years younger. Well, not that you needed it. You look fine already. Are you just saying that, aren't you? Well, it's not just looks, is it? It's character. All them little laughter lines. Well, your lips turn up at the sides. Kissable lips. Ron? Ron! Who's that? It's Dee Dee. Um, Ron! We're making tea, aren't we? Don't look all right if I've got lipstick on. Oh, you look lovely. What are you doing in here? Uh, just uh, making some tea, love. Well, I'm surprised at the pair of you. Leaving the shop open like that. Anybody could have walked in. Do you want a cup? No, I've just come for some of that lemon drink to see if I can get rid of this cold. Yeah, love, I'll get it. Come to your hair. Uh, not, not just, uh, well, caught in the rain, you know. I'll get out there, keep an eye on things. I hope he's paying you overtime for making a work on a bank holiday. Don't worry, he is. <laughs> That's all right, then. You're soaked. Get her a towel, Mandy. I'm all right. Here you are. Take it. Don't tell me what to do. Beth. You're letting him stay? Or don't expect me to have anything to do with him? Don't even expect me to speak to him? People can change. Don't say I didn't warn you. Don't say I didn't see it coming. And when it happens again, don't come running to me. Beth. Leave her. I should have a nice warm bath if I were you. Get the chill out of your bones. Don't worry, love. She'll soon get over it. Things will be different, won't they? Of course they will, love. The past is the past. It's gone. We're making a fresh start now. All of us. A family again. <laughs>